What are the trademarks of revival? A gathering together of believers. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what's never entered into the heart of man, that becomes normal for me. The same way trouble used to track you down without you trying, the almighty blessing of God will track you down. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you every day of your life. Get ready for a week like no other week. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard. A burden for the lost and a hunger for the word. The only hope for America is men and women full of the fire, full of the anointing of God. There's no other hope without preachers, without men and women whose mouth has been set on fire that would go and proclaim the gospel every day of the week and shout it from the mountaintops. I believe sitting in this room tonight are men and women that are going to wreck what the enemy's doing. The devil's not going to have America. He's not going to have this land. He's not going to have this land. The fulfillment of prophecy. Nobody knew Pastor Shuttlesworth before. He was a little one. But that prophecy was upon his head. A little one shall become a thousand. It is happening practically. And a small one shall become a strong nation. My God. What a malosa abandola manda. A small one shall become a nation. Do you receive this grace upon your life? A little one shall become a thousand receive a thousand members a thousand members a thousand members a little one shall become a thousand an outpouring of generosity towards god i pray thee if i have found favor in thine eyes terry for i have learned by experience that the lord has blessed me for thy sake knowing increase my association there. I'm blessed because of you. See, it's, it's called increase by association. You have that on you as a Christian. His nature, God, is to bless. His prerogative is to bless. His glory is to bless. His delight is to bless. His blessing is without ceasing. Wow, Lord Jesus, touch him! Jesus, touch these people, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and honor them today. Come on, people, keep praying with me. He said, tell him he can live as long as he want to live. He can do whatever he want to do in Jesus' mighty name. The manifest presence of God with signs and wonders. God says... I want to show off. I want to show the world and the devil my products. I want to show the world what I can do, who I can produce. I want to show off with the church. I want to show off with that woman. I want to show off. I want to show off Ayabaga da Galaya Tasatata. It's an exhibition. It's an advertisement. It's a superior, supernatural marketing. I want to show somebody off. God is about to show off with the church. It's about to show off with the gospel. It's about to show off. It's about to showcase. The gifts of the Holy Spirit at work. I don't know if the doctor told you you had a rupture in your eye. Isn't that right? Said it would never be better. Thou foul spirit of blindness, come. Help! Jesus, hey, open. You just get a little weary in that limb. Isn't that right? You have the beginning of sugar diabetes in your body. I take it out, the spirit of infirmity. 
because you know what's on the other side of your prayer. You know what's on the other side of your miracle. Oh, hallelujah. I got to shout when no one else is shouting. I got a song when no one else is singing. That's what God wants us to do. Thank God for the spirit of almighty God. I am born of God. I am in Christ. I go from victory to victory. I go from glory to glory. And I go from strength to strength. The I don't go from I've sickness to sickness. Oh, how does it feel to fail? How does it feel to lose? And I said, you know what? Why don't I act the biggest loser that ever lived? So I said, where can I find the biggest loser? And I remember what the word of the Lord said. For the biggest loser brought under my feet. I said, hey, loser, how does it feel to lose? And just as he was about to speak, I put my foot down and I said, hey, you lost the opportunity to speak again. You are not allowed to speak. Somebody shout out and win. A surge of people being called into the full-time ministry. Because the Bible says, go into all the earth, into all the world, and preach the gospel to everyone, everywhere. So I've got a part to play. I need to work. If you want to take over the land, you have a role to play. May the Abrahamic grace to command your household to keep the way of the Lord come upon you today. That God won't be something on your list of things to do. You will be a God first. Church first, Bible first, first century Book of Acts Christian, and your children and your children's children. Receive that today. I see America turning around by the hand of God. These are the trademarks of revival. What's crack a and from Los Angeles, California? Jonathan Shuttlesworth, same jacket, different undershirt. Hope you're in. I hope you like this jacket because you're going to see me wear it a lot. It's one of those like uh, durable waxed cotton jackets. And I hugged Camila wearing it one time and she went, Pa, you smell like a crayon. So good to see you in Los Angeles. So this, this thing won't go away. Alex Magala, the Moldovan sword swallower. What a week. I thought it would be over by. Uh, like Tuesday, I thought we'd start doing regular broadcasts, but the thing keeps going on. So it took probably the most drastic turn last night. Last night was the Wednesday. Oh, great crowd watching today. Love you. Last night was the, um, hey, Leela, Zachary, Austin. Many of you have not missed a minute of this. Kristen, <laughs> Kristen Smith wrote, welcome to the place where, pros where um, productivity goes to die. Because people have been watching at work getting nothing done. See you tonight, Darlene. If that's your son that comes with you, that guy is, is hilarious. I mean, you might have a different take. But for me, only meeting him a few times, I think he's hilarious. Bobby in Texas, good to see you. Okay, we got a lot to cover today. Uh, someone wrote, shh, S-H-H-H, exclamation point. I don't know what, are you shushing me on my own program? Uh, hello. All right, Michael O'Mara. Nice to have Heather Bedell. So it took a turn. They took the whole Wednesday night service at James River Church to address the controversy. And it's it's meaty. So we're not into gossip, but this is different somehow because it's it's insane. So in case anybody snuck on that has no clue what we're talking about, we are going to put on what took place at this men's conference. And then we're going to play the response, because if you don't see this, you have no clue what anybody's talking about. So for some of us, we're enduring it for the fourth straight day. But I do believe for this particular program, it's important to reset what happened. And uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah, today we introduce a, a major piece of technology, the Panasonic Picture in Picture, where you'll get to see me and the video at the same time. So leave me up and then go on and uh, let's get this party started.
not going to lick the sword, Grandpa. Magala, the pride of Moldova. Nobody had a problem with it. As you see, no problems. I don't know why the people are racing out. Okay, next. So this is what came out. How a dirt poor bad boy from a sleepy Moldovan town became a... Are there any, like, bustling Moldovan towns? Couldn't you just said Moldovan town? Became a seedy Vegas stripper before wowing millions as Britain's got talents, daredevil sword swallower. Able to read that now without laughing. It only took four days. Continue. We're going to talk about how to be an Elijah yeah. and how to deal with they have a Jezebel. But let me do this. Um... I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. Awesome. I just wanna say I too was up till two in the morning but I wasn't praying for any of you. I was eating unhealthy food on Venice Beach and inhaling free weed smoke that has permeated the entire air of California. So that's one of the differences between me and Mark Driscoll. Continue. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. Then, Off the top of my head, hasn't God ascended before? Isn't there something that I will ascend in the... It's just, it's early in the morning. But I tend to think God has ascended. Mm. Ascend unto my holy hill. I know Jesus ascended. He didn't descend further in Acts chapter 1. And he's gone. Who may ascend unto the hill of the Lord? <clears throat> Who may climb to his holy place? 
I think if you type in ascent or ascend, I think there'd be more scriptures than that. Anyway, not really important to me. He swallowed a sword, and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Now, the thing that changed from Monday till now is understanding the timeline. Because if that if that guy, the way they played it when it came out Monday, it made it, it made it seem like that guy did his act. There's two things that came to light that weren't in light when, when this was all released on Monday. Number one, they made it seem like on Monday he was a current male stripper that they had into the church to do that act. Then it comes out he's a born-again Christian. Might have a little more deliverance needed. That's not for us to say. But he's a, he's a born-again Christian. And uh, then and it, second, you, if you thought that that took place, the, um, the sword swallowing, and then it went right to Mark Driscoll preaching, that is true, Kevin, then you can kind of see it Mark Driscoll's way. But then when you understand that that performance took place the day before and that Mark Driscoll was with John Lindell many times between then, then um, it's kind of a jerk move by Mark Driscoll because it, it would be like if I had, um, I'm trying to think if I, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a friend that I have. If I had somebody in that I've known, and, and then that's the other thing. I thought maybe they don't know each other, that they just booked Mark Driscoll to come speak. It's going to come out. They've known each other a long time. Their families know each other. So if you did have a problem with that going on, and then you don't say a word about it to the pastor, then just get up and hammer what happened, and it wasn't in the moment, you can, you can start to see things Pastor John Lindell's way. So all right, here's John Lindell coming up and correcting it in the moment. <laughs> and then Pastor Paul, I see you. Sword, and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. You're Thank you. Get off the platform, Linda. See, like, that's bad. That's like a bad scene. You know, to, to have a Christian event, that I'm sure they just had praise and worship, and now you're going into the preaching, and you got people from the crowd. That'd be like me going up and grabbing the mic and people from my own congregation going, get off the platform, Shuttlesworth. At that point, it's, it's not good. So it's a pretty serious thing Mark Driscoll did because... And even that's calculated for you to like humbly get off the platform. So now you're the victim. And when really you're not the victim, you, you've made yourself appear like the victim, but you kind of victimize the host pastor. Because again, if it happened in the moment, then you see things Mark Driscoll's way. Once you realize there was a day in between and it wasn't in that service or anything, and it wasn't during a service, it is a bit differently. It has been different. So, you know, you, you, you kind of mess somebody's church up. So, continue. Let me just say this. Pause. So they're still yelling for him to get off the man. That's Redneck Central. Everybody all juiced up on Andy's frozen custard and go kart tracks. Um, somebody said, Mark was making an observation, not a rebuke or a judgment. If Lindell takes it as a rebuke or judgment, that's on him. I, I don't agree with that because if, I, okay, let's say next week I go to a preach at that church in Washington State that invited me. And I go, listen, this is not a rebuke. I'm just making an observation. This church has let in a demonic Jezebel spirit. It, you know, it is, it is a bit of a, a rebuke against the pastor. Continue. I'll pause, pause. Somebody in the comments said, teach me how to prosper through someone, Pastor. Not today. Continue. Go to him privately 
I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If you want to say it, he can say it to me. You I'm picking up stuff I've never heard before. So you you're out of line. Him, but we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to handle this agreement. So it it didn't it never went away. So last night, uh, John Lindell took Pastor John Lindell took the whole service to address it. Let's watch. Tonight is about following Jesus' plan and path for unity in the church. We are following Jesus' plan in Matthew 18 in response to the things that have been done by Mark Driscoll. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15, and we'll have it on the screen for you, Jesus said, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. Put me top right. <laughs> if he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But... If he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Pause. In those verses, Jesus gives us... The most offensive thing of this whole thing is that they're using the NIV. Continue. ...a three-step process for resolving conflicts, not just conflicts between believers, but a plan for confronting sinful behavior. Step one, you go to the person and point out their fault just between the two of you. Step two, if the person does not repent, you involve one to two other people. Step three, if they refuse, you tell it to the church. So with great sadness that I let you know we are at step three. Let me just say that I have known Mark since 2008. When the church that Mark pastored, Mars Hill, fell apart and Mark had very few friends, we stood with Mark and Grace to encourage them. We shared our platform with them when almost no one else would. Eventually, Pastor Robert Morris and Pastor Jimmy Evans worked with Mark and Grace as spiritual overseers to help them reestablish their ministry in Scottsdale, Arizona through the planting of Trinity Church. Pause. That is important to know. I mean, Mark Driscoll got fired from his church in Mars Hill in, in Washington State. And, when you know, most ministers won't talk to you when something like that happens. When you go down, nobody will return your phone calls or text you. John Lindell, who had no relationship with him, reached out to him and helped him out as like a nice guy. Which proves my theory, never help anyone. Um, so to know him since 2008, and he helped him when no one else would help him. You know, if you go to do what Mark Driscoll did, you know you're going to cause major problems for the pastor. And you, and you, you obviously make the decision, well, I'm going to do it anyway. This, to me, puts things in a different light than if he was just the guest speaker. Again, if he was the guest speaker, you had that guy do that sword-swallowing routine. He's not a Christian. He's a current gay stripper. Let it rip. When, when it happened the day before and you're with him and he's your friend and you never mention it to him and then you get up on the platform and blow it up that you've allowed the, the spirit of Jezebel and, and Ashtaropol, those are not like small, <laughs> you can't say those are observations to, to say that a pastor has turned his men's conference into a pagan event. Those are, now, whether you believe that or not, yeah, it probably, if you're somebody's friend and you're in the ministry, you might have wanted to mention to him, like, I, I did not like that. What happened? Are you going to address it? Because if you're not going to address it, I'm either going to address it or I'm out of here. 
But to just do it on stage for the first time, that's not how you treat a friend. I am H.O. Continue. Having Mark Driscoll at the Stronger Men's Conference was simply a continuation of our friendship and our relationship. But at the conference and in the days that followed, Mark has repeatedly engaged in sinful behavior. Let's start with Alex Magala, the sword swallower. Alex is a born again Christian and has been for approximately 10 years. He is married, has children, and attends Mosaic Church in Los Angeles, California, where Erwin McManus is the pastor. While Alex was here, he participated in worship, and when he was taken to the airport, our James River Church host watched as Alex... No, Patricia. So you're saying he helped him, so do not call it sin. I didn't say that. I said if you had a problem with it and it happened the day before, you say, are you going to deal with it or do you want me to deal with it? And if you don't want me to deal with it, I'm leaving. Because it's not your place. It would have dealt with it. If you left, like, like Michael Brown wrote, leave an issue of public apology. If it happened in the moment, you had, a, you had 12 hours between you going up and that happening. So there's no reason, in my opinion, to springboard it on somebody that's your friend. I'm not taking up. Have, when have you ever heard, seen me have sword swallowing acts in any of my meetings I'm, or anything like that? I'm not taking up for that. I'm, not, I'm just making some observations that you caused it. And he's going to tell you the major problems that it causes ministry to do that when you could have done it a different way. Like, let me give you an example. There's a church I'm going to preach at that had somebody in that said stuff I didn't like. I texted the pastor. He's my friend. What, you know, why are you having this guy speak and say these things when I say the opposite? You know, you, you know, and he, yeah, I'll correct it. I didn't like keep it. And then when I go to travel to his church, get up on Sunday, you know, your pastors had in some speakers here that have really grieved my spirit. Why not deal with it ahead of time? Then do it in a way that's going to you know, make the guy be in front page news. That's not how you treat a brother in Christ. And I think you have to remember that. Mark Driscoll didn't rebuke a senator or a pagan. You know, Alex is a Christian. He, you know, Alex Magala was in the service when that was happening. He didn't just do his act and leave. He was in the church service as a new Christian. And you call him a Ashtera pole stripper. So I do see things differently now that I understand the timeline and the relationship. I'm not saying nothing should be corrected. But if I'm going to go up and blow up a guy's ministry, it's kind of ballless to just sit with him for half an hour. Hey, how are the kids? See the Yankees game last night? Juan Soto's knocking the cover off the ball. Anyway, let me go up on stage and just trash your entire decision-making in front of all your people. You, you, you praying since 1 a.m. does not give you an excuse to make bad decisions. That's like what novice people say to cover their bad decisions. You know, I've been praying and the Spirit of the Lord came on me and I, I couldn't help it. That's not true. The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The Holy Ghost just doesn't like overtake you. There's a different way to do things in the new covenant, especially between brothers. You know, it's a totally different situation if Mark Driscoll's preaching, Alex Magala breaks into the meeting and starts doing an act, and you, you, you know, you've seen me lay into people from the platform and throw people out of the service. This is different because there was time. If there was no time, if it was in the moment, and that's how it made it seem on Monday, that this guy did that thing and Mark Driscoll gets up to preach. That's not in any way how it happened. Anyway, I, I don't like that either. I don't, you know, you notice we changed our shirt. I'm not going to call that guy a male stripper if he used to be a male stripper and got genuinely born again. John Lindell told what church he goes to and who his pastor is. It's wrong 
it's wrong to, to, to like, it's very wrong to call somebody a male stripper when they were a male stripper. They don't do that anymore and they gave their life to Christ. That's like evil. In my opinion. And if you take the other side of the equation, I'm not, I, yeah, like if you want to say this whole thing's a mess, he shouldn't have had that guy in. I'm not arguing. I'm not a member of the Sword Swallowers Association International. Despite my best efforts, I am not a member of Sword Swallowers Association International. But I don't know. I, why do this to this guy who helped you when you were, there's, it's not, uh, it's different. Now that you, to me, now that you understand the timeline, it's different. Now that you understand they didn't book a male stripper. They booked a born again Christian who does that act. Now, is the sword swelling, is the sword licking a little over the top? Yes, again, maybe a, some, some further prayer to get it, the total deliverance. Who am I to judge? Let's watch the rest. Alex boldly shared his faith with an individual. Yes, Alex, like many Christians, has a past, but he has been made Plus, a new creation. It's true. M male, male stripping, we've all done it. We'll all do it again. No, continue. He has been made a new creation through his faith in Jesus Christ. The national news asked Alex to respond to the comments being circulated online and his office provided this statement. In response to recent criticism of Stronger Men's Conference produced by James River Church, I feel compelled to clarify the context and intention behind my specialty act. My performance, which some have controversially Pause. I was going to, because so many people are saying, if he's born again, why is he still doing his strip act? It's not a strip act. Now, <laughs> it, it, there, there are definitely similarities, but this is his, his, uh, his action or his response. So I was going to put this on the screen, but John Lindell's going to read Alex Magala's response, that he's like offended and the head of Sword Swallowers Association International is offended. Because it's not, they, they take offense to that. They take the shirt off to show they're not hiding the sword down their shirt. That's the, that's the story. I'm just reporting the news. You wouldn't arrest the guy who's delivering the drugs to someone. I'm just an innocent bystander. Continue. Likened to inappropriate entertainment is deeply rooted in a historical and cultural tradition that dates back over 1,200 years and has since become a respected discipline showcasing human strength and agility. Pastor Mark Driscoll's remarks about my act failed to recognize the difference between a male striptease and a stunt performance rooted Pause. in art and... Uh, Kathy said, just, and she's being serious, just to let you know, all sword swallowers lick their swords first because it goes down more easily. Just saw a lady do it yesterday. You know, that's, it's, I, I'm sure that's true, but I think if you're gonna do it in church, Maybe use like Crisco or something less offensive. Something you're gonna have to alter that part of the act. I feel like that's the part. And maybe wear a tight shirt that people can tell you're not putting it down your shirt. I think the ripping off of the shirt and the sword looking, if you can just find a way to alter those two elements, we're not really having as much of a problem. Can we all agree on, can we? I know, I know the people are torn in the comments. I think we can all come to like a unity on that. Continue. Ford. Only an uninformed person would draw a comparison between my act and an inappropriate performance. I feel that this danger act is perfect for the Stronger Men's Conference. It provides inspiration to the audience <laughs> and permission for them to reach new Kevin. heights of what's possible in their lives. My mentor, Dan Meyer, is a leader of Sword Swallowers Association International, a multiple Guinness World Record holder in sword swallowing, and just so happens to be a member of Pastor Mark Driscoll's own congregation. 
Dan says, and I quote, it wasn't a raunchy male pole dance or stripper performance. Alex is the top of his field as a master in the classical 12th century martial arts acrobatic <laughs> discipline called Chinese pole acrobatics, which he performed at the Olympics. This is way different than a male stripper. It's semi-different. It's like comparing classical ballet with striptease. That's like comparing like... No comparison. <laughs> the convention uh -huh. hired Alec because the theme was strong men. And Alex is the best at what he does. I am a Christian and have always aimed to use my talents to inspire and entertain audiences in a way that respects my faith. This is Alex speaking again. The act in question was designed to be a celebration of physical human achievements and is aligned with the James River Church's purpose in bringing others into the light of God. It's essential to approach such performances with an understanding of their intention rather than reducing them to mere entertainment. Let me just add this. If people aside from Mark Driscoll had been offended by Alex's performance on Friday night, I would have been hearing about it the rest of the night. I did not receive one text, one email, or one phone call, and no one came up to me in the arena during the boxing to share their concerns. Furthermore, not one of the hundreds of hosts we had serving around the arena received a complaint about Alex's performance. That's true, Daniel. Although Mark knows that Alex is a Christian, he has done nothing to quell the furor over Alex's past. Mark could have easily contacted one of his own congregants to find out more about Alex or even contacted Alex's manager. But it seems that Mark is more interested in the controversy that will sell books, gain clicks, and increase donations to his ministry. Let me provide some background on what happened at the Stronger Men's Conference on Saturday morning. When I came into the green room, I visited with Mark Driscoll. Boss, I will say that I am surprised that people aren't buying this explanation. The comments are still probably, it looks about 70% against it. See, for me, I, it made me see things, John's, uh, Pastor John's way. I got two texts from ministers I respect, because I sent them the link. And, I, and um, he is scrambling to deal with damage control that is the largest controversy, if not the only controversy he's ever faced. His entire ministry is built on prayer and holiness. Instead of trying to cast the spotlight on Mark Driscoll, he should be making a public apology for the decision to allow a former exotic stripper to perform such an unclean act at a Pentecostal men's conference that is church sponsored. And that's, that's a guy that has no relationship with Mark Driscoll and if anything would see things John's way. So that was surprising. These are older guys. Trying to save face by turning into a division as opposed to be spiritual, as opposed to a spiritual and moral failure on his part. So people, people you know, his crowd, his congregation, you're going to hear is definitely supporting his answer. But I don't, I, you know, I, I thought people would hear this. And when they heard the timeline, be like, all right, it makes sense. Apparently, as morally flawed as our culture is, we've not gone to the point where people are willing to tolerate that sword swallowing act in church, even if it happened in the beginning or the day before. So note to self, you know what, guys, any type of stripper like events or things that could be likened to stripping. I want you to tell any guests we have at our church, if you, so help me God, if you maintain eye contact with any of our congregants while ripping your shirt off, you're out of here. You're out of here, buddy. Continue. We talked for about 20 minutes. He talked about how much he loved our family, loved the church. See this to me. And how he was a few years. If, if this is true, which I don't think John Lindell's lying, if you went in, how's the family and all that, and then went up and blew his ministry up. It's like me, if you're, if you're watching from Massachusetts, me and Brian Tomes. I've known him since 2012. If something went on at that church that irritated me, and, I, I, and he asked me to speak, 
And I'd go to back, hey, how are you? How are the kids? Good to see you. Thanks for having me in. And then go up and say, before I start speaking, I'd like to address something. You know, it's not illegal to do that, but you're not really somebody's friend if you do that. If you said, now listen, you did, you, I, don't, I, I don't like that you did this. So I'm not speaking until you go up and correct it or I'm out of here. You can do that. But to go up on the stage and basically do something where the result is people yelling, get off the stage, Tomes, get off the stage. You know, I've, I, I have definitely sown discord into the church. Was it right for them to kick me out of the church in South Carolina? Did I show up the next night and barge on the stage and tell, were lies told about me from the platform? Yeah. Did I go barge up on the stage? I, you people need to hear my side of things. It's not right for him to get, no, I left. So there's things you can do that aren't, aren't the best thing to do. Again, if it happened, Monday, everybody was under the impression it was bang, bang. Sword swallowing, address of the situation. It was not. There was a lot of time in between. Continue. Behind me in age, but wanted to get together in the coming months to discuss church leadership transition so they might learn from us. As well, we talked about what he would be speaking on. He stated that session one would be about Ahab and Jezebel. And no time during our conversation was there any mention of his angst over Alex Megala's performance or his concerns about the event. Mark could have easily mentioned Alex, but he did not. After I stopped Mark's message and calmed the crowd, I ran backstage to find Mark and was told that he had left for the airport. Is that true, Patricia? I ran into the parking area. Pause. And Mark... Alex, the performer, currently has a picture on his professional website giving the middle finger. Like, since this... <clears throat> Again, it is interesting that Alex Magala kind of skates through all this. And, and that's, how, that's how my... Um, the two ministers that I referenced by text, that's how they felt about it. It's like, that act was gross. So apparently that explanation, they're like, you know, he's a professional sword swallower and all that. It's like, okay, noted, it's disgusting. That's still the general consensus, correct? Emoji hand, if you, emoji thumbs up if you agree, emoji thumbs down if you disagree, that having said all that, that, that performance was repulsive. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay, I understand he's a sword swallower. I understand his act. I understand he's a Christian. Having said that, it skeeves the living H-E-C-K out of me. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Continue. Got out of the car. As he <laughs> came up to me, he said, well, that didn't go very well. To which I responded, Mark, you were out of line. And he said, no, I don't think so. I said, Mark, Matthew 18 is really clear on this. If you were offended by last night's performance, you should have talked to me about it first. Because in Matthew 18, it says, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault. Just between the two of you, if he listens to you, you have won your brother over. To which Mark responded, well, I couldn't help it. The Spirit of God came upon me. My response was, Mark, that's not true. The Bible says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So don't say you couldn't help it because that is not what the Bible says. And the Holy Spirit is never going to encourage you to do something that contradicts his word. Someone said good point to Lisa Barna. Lisa, type your comment again because it's scrolling so fast I missed Mark, it. Mark, you should have talked to me first. Said. We talked a bit more and Mark agreed to dialogue on the platform. I know that some have it's said Facebook. that Mark apologized on stage at the conference. He did not. Jimmy Evans who has served as Mark's spiritual advisor, watched the video and confronted Mark on this point. Mark uh, mentioned... Pause. Lisa Barna said, there are so many strong man things to show. Why did they pick him? Yeah. 
You're right. Not, I think we can, one thing we all can agree on, possibly not the most church appropriate act. All right, you can go to the bottom. Continue. That he should have come to me, but acknowledging what happened is not the same as apologizing. Following our platform discussion, Mark and I visited backstage while Pastor Jabin Chavez spoke. I told Mark, I love you and I want to continue to be your friend. Mark said, well, I've just crapped all over your event. And I said, I still want to be your friend. Mark responded by saying that he loved our family and the church and would never want to hurt us. We suggested having a picture taken that would show us together. Mark insisted that he be the one who posted it first. And you can see it there. And it is obvious that he collabed us on the photo. So it's a post by Mark. The picture was posted shortly after it was taken. I imagine. At that point, I was thinking that things were settled. When Mark returned to Scottsdale, Arizona, he sent me the following text at 5.10 p.m. Pastor John, it's Mark here. I just landed back in Phoenix. I feel like I'm watching a strange Netflix show I happen to be in. Thank you for 16 years of deep deposits and friendship. I love appreciate and respect you very much. My online team is the leading all negative. Pause. I'm not responding. Somebody said he's making it worse. Man, when you read the comments, Mr. Lindell, not, Pastor Lindell, not getting much support. Uh, thumbs up if this is making you feel better about Pastor John Lindell. Thumbs down if, if, if worse. They don't have a sideways for neutral. Huh? So you got to pick one, up or down. Because it looks like it's mostly negative. Continue. To anyone or anything, including text. I'm honored to talk about whatever, whenever. I'm genuinely praying James 1, 5 for you and mean that sincerely. Jeez. I deeply love you and your family and church family and appreciate the maturity and seasoned grace of your response under great pressure. Your character was <laughs> <Lisa>. proven. <laughs> and I'm grateful for you. <laughs> But later that evening, he started sending a string of texts to my son, David Lindell, about Alex and his past. On Saturday night at 10.30 p.m., Mark texted David, I'm not sharing this with everyone, but I'd expect a media discovery. I'm very sorry. Then he sent another text that said, anyone. It seemed that Mark had been embarrassed publicly and he was getting ready Pause. to create a firestorm. If you guys are saying gossip for sharing the text, I did wonder about that. What's like the ethics of sharing private text messages publicly? I thought you're not supposed to do that. I get it in this, I guess I get it in this sense. If you're saying I'm gossiping, you're gonna hear him at the end, he's gonna say, I hope everyone that shared what happened at the conference will use their same platform to share this video. <clears throat> so I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing that, so. Continue. On Saturday night at 11.26 p.m., Mark texted David, he, that's Alex, posted James River on his social media with your gals, gay porn stripper, Jezebel. He sent another text two minutes later at 11.28 p.m. My team has a file. I'm very sorry. It's completely demonic. In total, Mark sent eight texts to David Lindell that stopped at 12.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. On Sunday after church, I texted Mark the following text at 1.48 p.m. Mark, I wanted to respond to your text. For additional context, Alex Magala is a believer and participated in worship at every opportunity. He is a Christian regardless of the sin of his past. His shirtless performance was similar to the Mar Ramahadi brothers, as for the pole, it is a Chinese acrobat pole. The Chinese pole dates back to at least the 12th century, around 900 years ago. A rich history. By contrast, women's erotic pole dancing is less than 100 years old. I didn't know that. To suggest that a professional acrobat using a device that's been around for a thousand years is in the same category as an erotic dancer is at best misinformed or uninformed. We stand by the decision. 
Because Alex is a believer, I will defend him in the same way I have repeatedly stood by you and defended you. Good crowd. To that end, I'm asking you to bring to an end your pursuit of the situation. Should you continue to make it an issue, I will seek mediation. I love you and your family. You may or may not want relationship with us, but we would still desire to be friends. Really? I pray we can all move past the events of this last weekend. With min within minutes after sending that text, <laughs> the post with our picture there. together was removed from Mark's account. On Sunday evening at 7.43, Mark texted Pastor John, thank you for your response. I love you and your family as well. My plan is to be saying and doing nothing but praying. I texted back less than an hour later at 8.36 p.m. Mark, thank you, that's great. I love you. Do you see the deception? Mark expressed love on the one hand, but took the picture down. He knew that Alex was a Christian but it would seem that storyline would ruin his ability to generate clicks and sales. Instantly on Monday, the word spread like wildfire <laughs> about you, Alex. One can only wonder how that happened. To take it a step further, Mark had not only texted my son David, but he called David on Saturday night at 11.37 p.m. and left this voicemail. Hey buddy, this is Driscoll. I love you very much. I feel like throwing up and crying. I'm very, very oh. sorry. I said, there's very few moments in the day I don't feel like throwing up and crying. I spend the majority of my day when I'm not preaching just throwing up and crying, which has allowed me to eat way more calories. Continue. I sent you some text. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say any of that. I'm not going to share any Pause, of back, that. Back I'm not how, how, did the how did the message begin? Hey, buddy, I feel like throwing up and crying. Look at like one anorexic or one bulimic to another. Hey, buddy, feel like throwing up and crying. Want to come over and hold my hair back? Go ahead. At 11.37 p.m. and left this voicemail. Hey, buddy, this is Driscoll. I love you very much. I feel like throwing up and crying. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> I sent you some text. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say any of that. I'm not going to share any of that. I'm not going to do anything. I love you guys. And guys, and I wish I was wrong, but I have my team quadruple check, check it unless they have completely messed up. This is a major crisis for you and James River. And so, yeah, just check your text thread. I CC'd your dad. I'll do anything I can to help. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I've been the guy who is getting melted to the ground. The very last thing I want to do is be anything but a shield to love and protect you guys because I care very much for you and you guys mean the world to me. So I just wanted you to hear it from me that I'm very devastated, very broken heart. I love you guys very much. I'm for you. And if there's anything You're I can do to help without making things worse, I'm open to that. Know that I feel absolutely terrible and I'm praying. Yeah. And I just really appreciate the way you treated my son and son-in-law. You're a good man, David. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Pause. There's so much. It is. It is like a weak move. Like if I'm having a problem, this would be like if me and Pastor Rodney had a falling out and then I started messaging Kenneth. You know what I mean? Like talk to the guy you're having the problem with. It's like, it's like when two guys have a fight and then the, guy, the one guy like messages the guy's wife. Like, I'm sorry, I just wish our, my friendship with Bob could, it's like you're weak. Talk to, don't talk to his son. And don't, don't start trying to pit the son against the father or the son against the son. And then again, it's weird sharing private communications on a Wednesday night from the pulpit. I M H O. Continue. Mark called David again on Monday at 11:25 a.m., but left no message. Given Mark's response to me, I suggested that David should, as a courtesy, 
return Mark's call, which he did at 12.03 p.m. on Monday. On the call, Mark reiterated what he said in the voicemail on Saturday night. True, Nathan. He ended those statements by saying, I am not wrong. He followed that up by saying the follow to Dave, <laughs> the following to David, and David, it's this is as there. David remembers it. Number one, there is something wrong at James River Church. Number two, the leadership with you, your dad, and your brother is enmeshment. Enmeshment to Mark means that's a group of people, any group that is against Mark or that Mark doesn't agree with. Number three, there is something evil at work in the church. Something is different since the last time I came. There is a mixture of the sinful and the sacred. Pause. Number four, the reason... I just want to announce that Revival Today Church, Springfield, Missouri, will be opening this Sunday. <laughs> I feel like it's a good time to launch. Continue. That God is still blessing <laughs> is because of the foundation of grace made by years Pause. of Bible teaching. And this is going to be our byline. Revival Today Church, Springfield, Missouri. Everybody has a shirt on. Rose Day Church, Springfield, Missouri. Not, no swords licked. Continue. Number five, and I'm numbering them because these are statements David remembered. David, you need to differentiate. What Mark means by that is you need to separate yourself. And if you don't, James River Church may cease to exist. Number six, this is a word from the Lord for you. This may be the most important moment of your life. Number seven, Brandon is a broken man. The fact he could watch that guy in rehearsal and says, say nothing says something is wrong. Something is wrong with him. <laughs> Pause. And Tia, I don't know who you are. Well, today, Church Springfield, Missouri, no shirt, no service. <laughs> Can we get a T-shirt made? For the end of the broadcast, Revival Today Church, no shirt, no service. And then we'll give away two shirts today. Can we, um, can you pop the other shirt up real quick without losing the video? If not, it's no problem. We're going to give this shirt away to everyone who sows a seed of any size. I went to Stronger Men's Conference and all I saw was a Moldovan sword swallower. Just to commemorate the week that was. I think we can all laugh about it now. I'm sure Pastor Mark and Pastor John would be cool with it. Enough times passed. So we're going to send that shirt, and then we're going to do another one with our logo on it. Revival Today Church, no shirt, no service. Continue. Continue, guys. Uh-oh. I had a feeling you were going to lose the time stamp. But you need, number eight, to differentiate. Back up a little. Become the leader of James Now, River we're Church. going by the memory of the brother, of what he called. This, so this isn't documented. I'm not, and I, I don't think he's lying. But if this is true, and Mark Driscoll called the son and is trying to pit the son against the father, you know, that almost looks like he's trying to make a play for James River Church because he's already announced that he's turning the, the, the leadership of the church over to his sons. So if Mark's trying to like, hey, your dad messed up, your brother's messed up, your dad has messed up, your brother's got issues, me and you need to like, you need to make the right decision. I have a word for the Lord for you. That's like, if that happened, that's like dis disgraceful. What a mess. It's a mess. I take no, uh, despite my happy looking face, I take no, no pleasure in any of this stuff that happened but uh i took the morning and talked about it monday and then it, it kept going so here we are i don't run a gossip show but this week i do continue dark sins but you need number eight to differentiate and become the leader of james river church this is your fulcrum moment what does that mean what kind of person says those things? Let me say this. Brandon 
is a man of God in every sense of the word. People like Brandon. Standing ovation. Casual ones there, John Jimmy Honey, have you seen my yellow brandless t shirt? I have a joke. In fact, I will take it a step further. David is a man of God in every sense of the word. Because up to that day, we're sitting there like, what about me, Pops? I'm a man of God, too. I hate you and I hate Mom. But I hate all of you. And I will take it one step further. Savannah is a woman of God in every sense of the word. Because uh, she, up until then, she had her arms crashed. Like, I'm out of this man. Savannah. I've never met her. She's looking nice gal from the response. This is starting to feel like the last day of high school senior year. I'll never forget any of you. You can imagine that when David told me what had been said, I immediately wanted to text Mark. At 1.33 p.m., I texted Mark the following, Mark, what in the world? Your call to David was ridiculous. I thought your plan was to, and I'm quoting his last text to me, to be saying nothing and doing nothing but praying. So which is it? Where is your integrity? At 1.34 p.m., Mark responded with this text. I did not call David, he called me. I left a voicemail days ago. What Mark had done at this point was so egregious. Attempting to tear down the leadership of the church, attempting to create doubt and friction between brothers, attempting to sow discord between a father and a son. It seems demonic to me And honestly, it makes me very, very concerned for Mark. At that point, we moved to step two in the Matthew 18 process. Matthew 18, 16. But if you will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Within an hour, I called Dr. Jimmy Evans, the founder of Marriage Today, the Tipping Point Podcast, and the founder and president of Exo Marriage. Jimmy Evans, if you do not know him, is one of the finest Christian leaders in the United States of America today. Pause. Jimmy Evans, if you don't know him, is one of the finest Christian leaders in America today. If you don't believe it, just ask him. Continue. <clears throat> Jimmy had at one time served as a spiritual advisor to Mark. Those I sought counsel from said that Jimmy was very likely the only spiritual advisor that Mark would listen to. Dr. Jimmy Evans called Mark on Monday afternoon and Mark returned his call on Monday evening. Dr. Evans repeatedly told Mark Driscoll that he needed to repent. Each time, all that Mark would say is that Jimmy was a spiritual father to him and a friend that he loved. But Mark was unwilling to repent and still has not repented. 
As well, Dr. Jimmy Evans informed Mark that what he was doing and not stopping these things regarding Alex past and James River Church was resulting in death threats and horrible abuse to our James River Church receptionists. So much so that for the first Good time it, ever, <clears throat> we shut down our switchboard and put all calls to voicemail. You have a switchboard? Our receptionists <laughs> were Man, frightened 11, I'll take 61. and were in tears. Yesterday, I was preaching in Arizona where the Assemblies of God General Superintendent, Doug Clay, was also preaching. Oh, no. Following our preaching, he asked to visit with Plus, me. Following our preaching, <laughs> Doug Clay said, hey, can we have a talk for a second? What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> hey, mind if we have a quick chat? Continue. Said that the national headquarters <clears throat> of the Assemblies of God had also received violent threats and such disturbing interaction with callers that they too shut down. I'll be honest, most Their of that reception. was me. I had a lot of coffee. To this point, Jimmy encouraged Mark to say something to calm things down. To this point, Mark has done nothing to calm down the vigilante acts of his followers. Which brings us tonight to the third step in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18, 17 says, <laughs> if he refuses to listen to them, the comments tell it too much. to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. That means if he doesn't listen to the rebuke of tonight, any believer should not have anything to do with Mark Driscoll. Jeez. Let me say this. I get absolutely no joy or delight out of doing this to someone that I've called a friend. Pause. Mark. I'm going to give everybody that's watching a leadership principle. Never cry as a man in public. Also try to limit it in private. Don't cry at your wedding. Don't cry at your daughter's wedding. Don't cry at funerals. Don't cry. Crying is for children. Continue. If you are listening to this message, we love you, and with, it's with a heavy heart that we are calling you to repent. Jimmy Evans has called you to repent. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, Mark, we call on you to publicly repent. We are calling you to publicly repent for refusing to stop the spread of lies regarding Alex Megala, a Christian brother. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for sowing disunity in the body of Christ. Pause. I've never heard this happen in my life. And I've been in church. I've been in church and basically only in church my whole life. And I mean my whole life. <laughs> I, I, grew, I literally grew up in church. I've never heard, I've never heard, like, a, a, I'm not saying, I'm not passing judgment. I'm, I'm telling you, I've never heard this. I've never heard a minister go on, like, a broadcast and, and give, like, a detailed reason why another minister should repent or that no one in the body of Christ should have anything to do with them again. And it gets stronger. And, and now he, here's, well, I'll have to pause it when it gets to that point. Continue. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for covertly trying to divide brothers and making false and slanderous accusations against Brandon Lindell. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for trying to create division in the Lindell family, all the while saying you love us. 
bad. It's bad. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for trying to destroy James River Church through attacking its leadership. To those who follow Mark Driscoll Ministries. Pause. Okay. I've had people threaten to sue me for defamation before. And they never did because I never, defa I never did legal defamation. Defamation, legally, is not uh, making, def making negative comments about someone. If that was true, there'd be 20 million lawsuits a day off of Twitter. So you can't sue somebody because they say something negative about you. The two t litmus tests, like let's say, let's say there's a preacher, um, Pastor Ray good, good Giant is on. Let's say from Tennessee, Good Gene. Let's say I get mad at him, which I'm not. He's my friend. I'm using him for an example because I'm not mad at him. If I say, Pastor Ray is a loser, he can't sue me. If I say I would encourage any, Pastor Ray is a loser, and I would encourage anybody in Tennessee to not attend his church. Now I'm taking actions to hurt his livelihood, and I can be sued. Then, the, then okay, let me give another example. If it was an evangelist. Let's say, the, uh, we'll take an imaginary evangelist, Evangelist Dennis. If I said, Evangelist Dennis is a false prophet, he can't sue me. If I say, Evangelist Dennis is a false prophet and no church should have him speak, he can sue me. If I say, Evangelist Dennis is a false prophet and I would encourage anyone in the body of Christ to never send him another dollar, he can sue me because now I'm taking active steps to destroy his livelihood. So back it up f five seconds if you can and, and see what you, here's where I thought you could tell like people had sat down and this was cleverly crafted. I feel like this part legally, and if Mark's looking for trouble and you know, you cross this line where you're telling everybody in the body of Christ to have nothing to do with him. All right, that's gray. But then this part is not gray in my opinion. Continue. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for trying to create division in the Lindell family, all the while saying you love us. <laughs> Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for trying to destroy James River Church through attacking its leadership. To those who follow Mark Driscoll Ministries, in light of what has been presented, you should reconsider your relationship and support of Mark Driscoll Ministries. To those who have passed on information from social media and other sources. So I guess that's grayish. He, you know, support could mean like not money. But if you tell people not to support a ministry, like financially, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't have said that. I'm just saying this is a new, I'm not saying he shouldn't have said it. I'm just saying like, if Mark Driscoll's looking for a fight, I wouldn't have said that. Lindsay said, look, yeah, okay. I, I'd have left that part out, calling on people to just basically like shun him. <clears throat> You have to carry yourself different. You have to say things differently when you're being filmed. It's like if it was cameras off, closed church meeting, it's different. But then if you're going to. Okay, so then this part is directed to me and others like me because it's people that shared this on social media, which I, I honored what he said. So back it up like five seconds, like literal seven seconds. Go ahead. Family, all the while saying you love us. Mark, Thanks, we are calling Lindy. you to publicly repent for trying to destroy James River Church through attacking its leadership. <laughs> to those who follow Mark Driscoll Ministries, in light of what has been presented, you should reconsider your relationship and support 
of Mark Driscoll Ministries. To those who have passed on information from social media and other sources that tonight has been shown to be false. I'm listening. You too need to repent. Gosh. I mean, I don't know, man. All I did was show what was like in public news sources. And then I actually showed the thing about Alex Magala before they announced the thing about Alex Magala. So I've shown it everything that's come out about it. So I would like to take this time and just say, I am not sorry. I didn't do anything. Leave me out of it. I woke up, grabbed a coffee, and came here and just see what came out of my mouth. I have no ill intention towards anyone. I wish all the best to all parties involved. I don't, how do you drag me into this? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Leave me alone. You wouldn't arrest the guy that's delivering the drugs. Go ahead. And not just before God, that is certainly where it starts, but repent by going to those with whom you have shared false information and set the record straight. Okay, so I did that. Pause. Doing it. I don't know that we shared any false information. I can't speak for other people. What was false? Alex, Alex McGall is a former stripper, which I'm, not, I'm, I'm stopping sharing that. And I did that a day ago. Once it came out, he claims to be a Christian. But what, I, I don't know what was false. You know, we played videos of things that happened, then, then factual things. And then, and then uh, I, I don't remember any false information. I mean, I would, I, yeah, and, and I think even if you watch from Monday, I wasn't saying like, I told from the beginning that I've only heard good things about Pastor John Lindell. I don't know Pastor Mark. I know he has like a, a strong ministry or, an, you know, an influential ministry in the United States. This is not me telling two pastors how they should have handled their business. It's basically me watching TV with an audience as I slowly wake up to start the day. I don't remember saying anything like mean about them. So, it's one thing if you're going to call on Pastor Mark to repent, like basically to call on every single person. This was a top 10 trending news story in the, in the world, I think. I mean, it overtook, it made people forget about Iran and Israel. The, I don't want to say that having in the, the um, sword swallower may have been a mistake, but it was such a bombshell. Iran and Israel are like, hey, let's, let's, hey, what do you say we take things easy for one week? You're never going to believe what's happening. I can't do accents. Continue. Through the same manner and with the same platforms as you spread the false information. Pause. Patricia said, Pastor Jonathan is compromise. I don't know. What do you want me to do? You want me to show up today with Pastor Alex's severed head? I've taken care of this. <laughs> this one, I refuse to compromise. I don't know what you want. I, I, I don't have anything to do with this. I've never preached at either place. Never been invited. Guessing I probably never will be invited after this week. I don't know what you want from me. Continue. Finally. You want me to return? To our James River family. Oh. Somebody said, I appreciate Brother Jonathan bringing this to our attention. I mean, if I brought it to your attention, <laughs> I, that's the thing. I would feel like some culpability if, like, I broke the story. I was the one that filmed it with my camera. When I woke up Monday, this was a top 10 trending news story. And so I just played it and found out about it live on air with you. That's how Check the News was birthed. It was me checking the news for the first time with you, with zero prep work. As, and if you ever watch the show, you can... 
I'm sure it comes as no surprise that no preparation went into the program whatsoever. Many times Mogalis is sitting down four seconds after the camera has turned on live on air. So I'm just, I was just watching. I wanted to see what the, what the thing was about, what, why it was a news story. Continue. Thank you. You have no idea how loved you are. Who? Not only Me? by social media, Debbie maybe? and I and our entire leadership team, but let me say this. <clears throat> you need to know this. Never before in the history of the church has there been such an outpouring of love and support from Christian leaders across the country as we have witnessed in the last three days. Texts and calls of affirmation have poured in over the last few days. I want you to know that we are not alone. And most of all, that you are loved and being prayed for. I also want you to know that what we have done tonight was done seeking the counsel of several godly leaders. I would like us to close this portion of the service by praying for Mark Driscoll to repent. Here's the attitude everybody needs to have in your heart. We cannot be hurt by him. Don't let what he's done hurt your heart. All right. <laughs> let your heart hurt for him and for his family and for his church. Can you imagine? Would you stand? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, boss, if you pastor and if someone's got church and you get to close a service out, someone will just appear with a keyboard on a minor chord. You could preach on joy for an hour and a half. Continue. We come to you. In the name of your son, Jesus. Following your word with a broken heart. Lord, we love Mark, we love Grace, we love their children. We have recognized his gifts and now tonight we're asking you to help him recognize his sin. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to his heart when he hears this message. If possible, even tonight. I pray that you would cause him to turn from the pride that would reject godly counsel to repent and that he would throw himself <laughs> not only at the mercy. I don't mean to interrupt the prayer, but to me, th th this puts it a little over the top because I could see like calling on somebody to repent and you, you know, you messed with my family. I rebuke you type of thing. But then going into the prayer with the slow music, that the whole prayer is that someone else would recognize their sin and repent. I mean, you can't sound more self-righteous than that. Can you imagine me closing out today's broadcast? Let's just pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You know Ram DaCosta that runs our media department? Help him to realize what a wretched piece of garbage he is without you. May he realize he's an awful husband and father, and I pray that he would see what a terrible person he is and turn to you, even tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what I mean? Like, to target your whole prayer about what, how wicked one person is. I don't know, man. And then the other thing that I see in the comments a lot it is weird that through this whole thing, Alex Magala skates. Like, oh, and I don't mean him personally. You know, people, 
the, the public opinion of which once I heard the explanation, I'm not having that at my church. I don't do that kind of stuff in my church, but okay. That's, I don't know sword swallowing. So if the, the, the part for the course is you take the shirt off, you did what you were booked to do. I, all right. But people don't feel that way. People think, my, you know, the two ministers texts I read, they felt it was gross. <laughs> uh, he's scrambling the deal with damage control that's the largest controversy, if not the only controversy he's ever faced. He, instead of trying to cast the spotlight on Mark Driscoll, and the person texting me this is not a fan of Mark Driscoll, he should be making a public apology for the decision to allow a former exotic stripper to perform such an unclean act at a Pentecostal men's conference that his church sponsored. Trying to save face by turning into a division as opposed to a spiritual and moral failure on his part. That's two different major preachers that I respect. You know, that like you messed, you know, whether you feel it was a mistake or not, it was a mistake from the fallout. It's not like there's fallout because you preach something out of the Bible and people didn't want to hear it. I mean, is it worth all this? You know, maybe a, a, a mention, it probably, you know, wasn't a wise idea because it is gay. It's gay. Like, I get it that you're, form, you're a former male stripper, but then you're basically, you know, it's like how former if you're taking your shirt off, then we won't, I won't say the rest. I don't know. Go ahead. Of your feet, but throw himself into your word and obedience to your word. Yes. Come on. I pray that there would be a godly sorrow that works repentance that would flood his heart. I pray there'd be a drone strike on that keyboard. Lord, only you can do this. You're the one who does it. We ask you to do it in Mark. I pray that he would realize how he's torn the body apart, the body of Christ. At large, across the country, how he's created division between brothers in the Lord and sisters. Pause. This is your problem. It hasn't caused any problem. Like, I haven't, nobody here is getting torn apart or anything. I've been eating cheesesteaks like there's, like, like the doomsday clocks hit midnight. Drinking milkshakes. I've been having the freaking time of my life. You know what I mean? I understand when you're going through a controversy, it feels like like it's the whole world. It's it's just it's a thing between you and Mark Driscoll. It's not tearing the body of Christ apart. I've been going about my day. Continue. I pray that it would make him so sad. I, I pray that he would see what he's done to a fellow believer. Pause. Can you scripturally pray that God makes someone sad? Father, I come to you today. Make Jake Lahasset sad. <laughs> it's like a light curse. Continue. By the name of Alex. And Lord, I pray that the realization Pause. and the weight of what... At this point, you almost have to think Alex Magala has dirt on, on John Lindell or something. I'm not messing around. I'm saying that completely joking. But... The guy gets it like it's like I'm gonna throw Mark Driscoll under the bus. I I must save Alex Magala. You'd think he was like uh, Paul Gambino. Make sure you don't say one thing against Alex Magala, or you and your family will go missing. Drop. Can you like a literal ten seconds? Can you back it up? Not like a minute. If you can't, it's no problem. I want to see how Alex comes into the prayer that he would realize how he's torn the body apart. The body of I feel like Alex Magala is somewhere in Moldova right now going like this. <laughs> Excellent. Everything's gone exactly according to plan. All right, go ahead. Christ. <laughs> At large, across the country, how he's created division between <laughs> brothers in the Lord and sisters. 
I pray that it would make him so sad. I pray that he would see what he's done to a fellow believer by the name of Alex. I, boy, Alex gets a lot of compassion, man. And Lord, I pray that the realization and the weight of what he's Come done would cause his heart to be flooded, not with anger, but with sorrow. Yes. Sorrow that would turn him to you and then <laughs> would release in him the power to do what's right and to publicly repent and acknowledge his sinfulness. Pause. <laughs> this, is a, this is a crazy prayer. I've never heard a whole prayer focused around like one person being sad and repenting. I don't know, man. I mean, you wanted this played. I, and I thought, it, like for me when I watched it, but people, people aren't taking it the way it was intended to be, to be played. You know, I don't know. Okay, let me ask you this. Like, and like, don't don't try to be funny. And we're not looking to make light about anything. He, thumbs up if this made you feel better about Pastor John, this this response, or or thumbs down for mine for like uh, now I now I'm like really done with it. Because for me, it was a thumbs up. It was like, all right, I get it. I understand the timeline now. If Mark called your son and tried to put division, but man, judging from the comments, Ninja Buddha fit better, and that's it. <laughs> Lisa gives the thumbs down in the Italian. This every everything that's asked. It's that's a lot of emoji thumbs. This may set a record for most emoji thumbs down ever ever again. Thumbs up until the prayer and then thumbs down. That's the, the, the prayer. The prayer is like over the line because it, it it's so self-righteous to like pray about, about like one person be, being sad and all the damage they've done. I don't know. Again, I'm not. I don't know any of these people. I know of them. I had only heard good things up until this week. I don't, I have no problem with anything to do. I don't pass judgment. J Pastor John Lindell has a much, much bigger ministry than mine. It's not even close. So I don't, I don't tell how things should be done or whatever. Just watching and comment. Continue. God, we pray for grace. Lord, help her. Be help. close to her. Guide her. Who? Give Who's her wisdom. Her? We pray for his children. Back it up. How awful this must be for them. What lady? How he's created division between brothers in the Lord and sisters. I pray that it would make him so sad. I pray that he would see what he's done to a fellow believer by the name of Alex. And Lord, I pray that the realization and the weight of what he's done would cause his heart to be flooded, not with anger, but with sorrow. Yes. Sorrow that would turn him to you and then would release in him the power to do what's right and to publicly repent and acknowledge his sinfulness. I don't think that's gonna happen. God, we pray for grace. Lord, help her. Be close to her, guide her. Give her wisdom. We pray for his children. How awful this must be for them. I pray, oh God, that you would Come touch on, their man. hearts and their minds and that anger would not reside in them, but Lord, <laughs> Jeez. They, would, they would feel your presence and trust you for an outcome that's supernatural in every way. So, Lord, do a work in Mark, we pray. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your thought.
So Mark Driscoll had his Wednesday night service last night, and I I, I don't think he addressed it at all. But I, he's gonna have to say something now. <clears throat> that was rough. You know, I didn't think it was rough when I watched it last night, but then again, I had just had like a 2,200 calorie Samoan cookie milkshake. It's like the Girl Scout Samoan cookie. So I think I could have watched like anything and been happy. Do we have the new t shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> Let me tell it, and I want to be clear about this, because I had said uh, uh, what I said earlier. It takes a big man to cry, but it takes a bigger man to laugh at that man who's crying. And I'm going to be that bigger man today. Revival Today Church, no shirt, no service. We're going to send you this shirt. <laughs> Steve Lee, see you, see you soon, buddy. And then secondly... <laughs> we have the shirt we've been giving away all week. So we're giving two away today for everyone that gives to stand with us. Who in their right mind would not give in this offering? I'm reading the comments. I do think it, you know, th this for me as a pastor has definitely put something in me where I never want to like have secular acts in, um, in church because, oh, look, they, they've trimmed the square. Now it's just a little me in the picture. This is great. Because I think you open a door when you, when you bring carnal and, and uh, carnalish stuff into a service. It's just, it's a mistake. It was never done in the history of Christianity to like, 20 years ago. Is that true? Where did Pastor Mark Austin, what are you referencing? Did Pastor Mark come and make public accusations, like specific accusations against the one son? Thank you. <laughs> I see you, Pastor Steve. <laughs> I mean, he had, yep, I agree. But I agree. I'm not seeing really anything in the comments I disagree with. Or should we change it to Revival Today Church? No shirt, no problem. Yeah, Revival Today Church, no shirt, no problem. <laughs> We're going to stand with Alex. Can we get it changed real quick? So if you've given, I'm not refunding your money, but you're not going to get this shirt. It's Revival Today Church, no shirt, no shirt, question mark, no problem, exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, because uh, I forgot there's also women. All right. All right, we'll keep it like this. Because I, I'm not trying to be, like, dirty. Exactly. Jeremy and Tara said, what about, mm, what about girls? I just thought about that right now. Forgot that there's also another gender, so we'll keep it as is. <sighs> I see. I saw you, Austin. Here's the ways to give, <laughs> to get these two beauties. We're only blocking them. Um, Zell, which who uses that anyway? Oh, all right. Info at revivaltoday.com. We've been delisted by Cash App. I irritated somebody in Silicon Valley. 
dancing all around the screen. Oh, yeah, you don't know where I'm going to be. That's right. Oh, 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 you think you can? No, you're not going to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm completely gone. Yeah, I'm back. Oh, no. <laughs> if I act like this and I've never had alcohol or drugs, I'm really glad I've never had alcohol or drugs. Venmo at RTGive. RevivalToday.com slash PayPal. <laughs> Hashtag donate on Facebook. Let me move over to here a little bit. Text RT to 50155, and then you give crypto by, by scanning the QR code. If you want to mail it, Revival Today, P.O. Box 7, Prosperity, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sorry, I left out the P.O. Box. Revival Today, P.O. Box 7, Pros or did I? I don't know. P.O. Box 7, Prosperity, Pennsylvania, 15329. And then it, um, you have to claim your offer because there's some ways you give that we don't, we don't get it. So you f go to revivaltoday.com slash offer or you click claim my offer while supplies last but there should be plenty of supplies because we're just making that shirt right now some of you feel like i've sold out by not putting no shirt no problem that's the thing i just remembered though the, it's no shirt no shoes no problem because then it doesn't make it all about the shirt but then they want to make sense thank you if we could get serious for a moment you actually are helping feed five thousand kids a day the gospel be preached John makes a prediction. There's no board that will allow this much attention to their pastors. He'll step down before the week is over. I disagree. Because he has a huge history there. I mean, that, that would be like, he might step down sooner than he was going to, but he's already announced he's going to transition out. Tough week at James River Church. That's true. I mean, when you have to, anytime you have to take your phones off the hook, it's not good. We've had to do that before. I know. You know, it is kind of a a good sign that America, there are still things that are too gay for it. As much as they've tried to get you to be accepting of that kind of behavior, people are like, get this out of here. Thank you for your giving. Here's the two shirts again. Vow today, no shirt, no service. What if we put, no, because then I'll get sued. We could do one with a picture of Alex Mogala, James River Church, no shirt, no problem. <laughs> but then I think I think I get sued. Can I be sued? Does anybody have any legal back? <laughs> Let me go for legal expertise to the commenters. Are you sure, Your Honor? Because uh, Blue Nose 27 told me that it's, it's to it falls within public use. Anyone know legally? Scale one to 10, how much trouble am I getting into legally? With James River Church, no shirt, no problem. No lawyers on. Kristen Smith says it's good. Caleb G says it's good. Marta Gomez is honest, like most of you should be, and just wrote no idea. No, I'm definitely not going to make that this year. Easier to ask forgiveness than permission. That's not always true legally. Eh. Nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess the main thing is, if you have to ask, probably a bad idea. Good advice, Patty. All right, I'll leave it. I don't want. I mean, and they've been going through a hard time anyway. And I was one of the, one of the reasons I've been lighthearted about it was to try to diffuse it and not make it serious. But I guess that ship has now sailed. It's kind of crazy that um, 
you, you sat with leaders to like craft that speech and the speech made it worse for most people, not for me and not for Ninja Buddha, but everyone else. Interesting thought, Mike. What? Shane said that shirt makes me think of the story. I, I don't remember that story. <laughs> That's right, Phil. I'll make that announcement. Out of an abundance of caution, we're not going to make that shirt about James River Church. Hope you've had a chance to give. Thanks for staying with me. Now we've got two nights left in Los Angeles, 7 p.m., here at the Sheraton Gateway Los Angeles where I'm currently seated. It's been a great week. And the, <laughs> no, it's fine. Whatever. Okay. Hey, out. <laughs> I know you wish your ministry had this kind of technology. Just keep let, <laughs> letting the Lord grow you. One day you'll have Panasonic picture-in-picture -picture technology. You know, yeah, Mark is going to have a response, so I'm guessing I'm going to have some Friday content. This was one of the most fun weeks I've ever had in my life. I'll tell you, I'm getting another cheese stick. I wasn't going to, but I'm like hungry now. <clears throat> we will make that, Caleb. Revival Today Los Angeles t-shirts. Did you really flunk the bar exam? I've heard it's a very difficult exam, so no judgment here. My wife is having a women's gathering in Fort Worth at the at Royal Today Church Fort Worth. That's tomorrow. Can never let me have my own thing. She's competing with me. Comes to the Southwest. Do you have any uh, graphic for that? If you don't, it's okay. I'm in a very good mood. All right, no graphic. It's a dollars at 7 o'clock at Revival Today Church, Fort Worth, um, which is, is Lifestyle Christianity's building. <coughs> what do you think the percentage chance is that Mark Driscoll is going to have a response before tomorrow's program? I would say 20%. Because I think he might do one, but also he might just let them cook in this. Also, let's do this for a poll. And I'm actually, I'm not doing this to like generate clicks. I'm about to go off air. Who do you side with after all this? Just write, Mark... John, or or done with both, like it's just I I I I, I won't clear of the whole thing. I'd be interested. Yeah, the done with both is, it, and that's why. <clears throat> like when that when that pastor attacked me in Oklahoma City or what happened in South Carolina, that's why I just never address it because what all that ends up happening as time goes on is it's like you both people people flee people who gave them a bad feeling. So even if everything's you're you're saying is true, it's negative and it makes people feel bad. So, but at the same time, Pastor John had no choice but to address what was happening. The prayer at the end was was the worst part. I'll tell you what hurts the most is the lack of respect. Rosalie Benson. Yep. Nice to see you, Rosalie. Tell your husband I said hi. Great job with your family. All right. That's all for today, folks. And that's not all for today. I'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock. So if you came on here for ministry, if you can just hold your horses for a few hours, I'll give you both barrels tonight.
What a mess. You guys have the recap of last night? Yeah. So you can do that, and then you can do the um, Tupac ad. I will see you tonight in Los Angeles. Please help me spread the word. Parking's free. No tickets. Share it in Gateway LAX. I will see you here tonight. I love this it. is not the devil's time. This is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost before Christ comes back. And if you think California is going to be left out, I've got news for you. You're sadly mistaken. God is going to pour out his spirit one more time on all flesh, including California flesh. You can put a different inflow that doesn't say you're going to die. You're going to have cancer. It says you're going to be healed. You're going to live a long life. Your family is blessed. God will do a miracle for you. I came to tell you, no matter what's gone wrong, as you listen to God's word tonight, something is rising in you like a mighty volcano. It's a substance called faith. That faith moves mighty mountains. It parts the Red Sea. And God will do a miracle for you tonight as you believe him in Jesus' name. Hello, this is Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, and if you're on the West Coast, I want to invite you to something that I believe will change your life. April 14th through the 19th, Revival Los Angeles. Sheraton Gateway, Los Angeles, 6101 West Century Boulevard in the great city of Los Angeles, California. Sunday through Friday, every night at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Go to RevivalToday.com and register on our events page. It's free to attend, but you have to register. I'm going to be there, and I'm believing God not only to do great things in your life, but to do something that week that turns the tide in the entire West Coast of America. God's not finished with America. God's not finished with California. And God's not finished with you. April 14th through the 19th, I will see you at the Sheraton Gateway Hotel in Los Angeles, California for Revival Los Angeles.